So regular viewers of this channel, I must apologize because typically I am quite sedate. I don't express a very strong, passionate opinions. I try to be dispassionate. But this video is going to be very different. And for those of you who are watching this channel for the first time, all aboard the crazy train. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ministry of Guitar. My name is Utkarsh. I'm coming to you from Singapore. As always, if you like what I'm doing, please do like, subscribe and share. It helps build an audience and that helps build all the encouragement I need to keep doing this. Okay, so the thoughts that I'm going to express in this video are going to be not improvised, but these are thoughts that have been wavering in my head for a long period of time. And I felt like I do want to put it out there because I'm sure many of you are having similar thoughts as well. So what I'm going to talk about is five hard truths that guitarists don't accept in fact, they just go against the grain of these hard truths. And these are tough pills to swallow, so let's get into them. Hard truth number one. No one, no one in the real world cares, gives a shit about how good you are at guitar. For most people, it's binary. Oh, you play guitar or you don't play guitar. Can you strum that Ed Sheeran song in a party or you can't? That's 99% of people you will meet outside of the guitar world. Now, in the guitar world, you have this very interesting phenomenon that all, on, and that on all YouTube videos, regardless of skill level, you have trolls, haters, you know, out there, which I find to be the most ridiculous thing because I'm going to use a very weird analogy here. If you're into cars, you may have heard of BMW, and BMW has this very prestigious subdivision called M. And what a lot of, peop lot of people do is they put an M batch on their regular BMW to make it seem more special. It's the stupidest thing in the world because 99% of people who don't know what BMW M is will not know what that is. They won't notice. And the people who notice it will know that that's not a, not a real M car and will think you're quite a, quite a tool for doing that. When I think, when I see people commenting on how someone is playing guitar or there's their skills, I think the same thing. Because for most people, a person is playing guitar, they're playing guitar. Even if they're playing cowboy chords, they're playing a guitar. That's great. You are playing guitar. But the guitarist who sees somebody commenting on the, on the playing ability, they'll be like, oh my God, does this person have nothing better to do? I mean, there will be, of course, the odd psychopath or the odd person who's very much having whatever issues that they may be having with their lives. But the majority of people, the majority of the guitarists you meet, everybody is very accepting of different skill levels and encourages people. So folks, if you think that getting better and better at guitar or making being good enough guitar so you get praise from said internet trolls is going to get you anywhere in the real world, <laughs> it's got nothing to do with it. You may appease a couple of, uh, a couple of people who shouldn't, you shouldn't be appeasing anyway. Just do what you like, play the kind of guitar you want. And to the majority of the world, that's all that matters. You play guitar, that's cool, that's pretty nice. Okay, hard truth number two. This is a difficult one for people to accept. And it's going to spill over into many things that I'm going to say. The thing to note is, you have to know that the world, the world does not owe you a living from doing your passion, let alone playing guitar. The world does not owe you anything for that. Now, a lot of people say, look at all these nice guitars. Real musicians cannot afford them. Only these, whatever, lawyers, dentists, doctors, and whatever I do. Only these people can afford these guitars. Yeah, professions, real professions are, are more numerous than the professions that allow you to do your passion and still make money. You know, we have been in a very fortunate period of time. I've talked about this in another video. The 20th century was a unique period of time where craftsmen, musicians rather, were suddenly able to become these larger than life gods. Because musicians did exist earlier as well, but they were relegated to the courts, or maybe they were part of the performing troupe that went from town to town. They were not superstars. Because of mass media, because of radio, because of television, you had this time period where suddenly the larger-than-life personalities were the musicians. And this is suddenly going away because what's happening now is, yes, you have a face. You may have these famous pop stars like, say, Dua Lipa, but the real musician behind it are all of these professional songwriters. Right? So it's not the musician, it's not the guitarist, it's not the session player who's making the money or getting the big bucks or being the larger than life hero. That happened for maybe 20, 30 years when you had the rock star between the 60s and 80s, but it's over. 
It was a very fortunate period in history. So if you're able to make a living from guitar, that's great. But the it, you shouldn't have to make a living from guitar in order to play guitar. You can play guitar for fun. So, you know, there are a lot of... Uh, so there are two or three lessons from this. One is if you can't make a living from playing guitar, even if you're an amazing guitarist who can run rings around everybody, it's okay. There are other ways to make money. A lot of people have, you know, diversified. People do lessons. That's the way of the economy. What people want is what they want. Nobody's paying money for music. I think nah, I think we, we've all talked about how Spotify works, etc. It's just the way of the real world. So it's okay. Deal with it. If you can end up making money from playing guitar, so be it. If you can't, do okay. No worries. Shouldn't stop you from doing what you like and playing guitar. So don't think that just because you're good at guitar, the world owes you a living from playing it. Doesn't work like that way. Okay, number three. Another one that I wanted to say, and when I see comments about this, it just, the ignorance just irks me a little bit. Uh, and pardon me, I'm not trying to, uh, not trying to, um, you know, put anybody down. It just annoys me a little bit when I see people comment. What I want to tell you is that if people didn't buy expensive guitars, cheaper guitars, affordable guitars, would firstly not be that cheap and affordable, and secondly would be a lot worse. Let me bring, give you another story from another industry, again cars, I can't help this because I'm a massive petrol head as well. There's a famous car model which you may have heard of called the Mercedes S-Class. This is Mercedes's flagship. What they do on the S-Class is that they pioneer technologies which are super expensive, and they try and see whether they can work, and then slowly they trickle down that technology to the lower model. So what happened is, the first ever airbag, we all have airbags in all our cars right now. It was pioneered with the Mercedes S-Class. It was really expensive. Some, uh, some rich people were paying the equivalent of probably $150,000, $200,000, 2030, whatever years ago, whatever the time period is, don't quote me on the dates. And then they could, initially it was very expensive, then they could bring it down to everyone. Similarly for traction control, similarly for many other technologies. So similarly, something like that is happening on guitar. So I'm not going to use Gibson and Epiphone because they have been stuck in the 50s and making replicas of that. But take someone like PRS. All, if you look at the kind of stuff you can get for like $500, $600 today, the PRS SE CE24 Satin, an excellent guitar, an excellent tool. Honestly, you only need to spend $600 and you'll have a guitar that's as functional as anything that you have in this room behind me. Why is it that cheap? Why do, it has a lot of innovations that are not on, pioneered on it, nor could it have, it have been pioneered on a $500 guitar budget. They've all pioneered on much more expensive guitars, all the experimenting that PRs has done on their cores and their private stocks. And then certain people who can afford it buy these expensive guitars so that these technologies can be developed. And then, and then they're replicated and mass produced at a much cheaper price and everybody can enjoy it. This is just the technology aspect. From a business aspect, these expensive guitars are sweeteners. They're margin sweeteners so that you can have a cheaper price on a cheaper guitar. This is how business works. So when you, a lot of people who have these kind of a little bit of a green eye and have all this envy and are really irritated at people buying expensive guitars, guys, the reason your guitar is cheap is because people are buying expensive guitars. Not me, I haven't bought enough guitars to do anything. But that's how it is. That's how business works. So I'm not saying be thankful, but at least be aware and don't be an idiot. Um, just sorry if I, if I offend anyone, but it's just how I feel because it's, it's kind of the naivety of some people just kind of gets to me sometimes. Okay, talking about business and finance. Number four, you should never, ever, there is no good reason rather to ever finance a guitar, ever. It's a need, not a want. If you really need a guitar, you can find one on Craigslist or whatever is your local marketplace. Somebody will sell it to you or somebody will give it to you. And then you can spend 50 bucks on a setup and you'll be going. So as a piece of equipment, you don't never need to buy a guitar, let alone finance it. If you're ever financing any uh, guitar, house is a different matter. Mortgage is a house costs whatever, hundreds of thousands of, hundreds of, thousands of dollars. You can't pay that up front. That's a different story altogether. With a guitar, never finance it. There is no good reason to do it. I have never done it. Um, so this is one thing that I do have to call out. Um, one of the things that, and this is going to link into my last point, is the modern world gives us all of these reasons to consume more, to buy this, to get that, to impress this person, to do all of that. <laughs> it is, no, nothing is necessary. It is purely 
marketers like i used to do in my previous job just trying to find reasons to make you consume more stuff so that you can so that companies can earn more money this is not to say capitalism is bad there's a lot of good stuff but there's a line between responsible consumption and overconsumption and i think a lot of places we are getting over that i know how ironic it is given that i have so many guitars behind me i have uh, listed out my reasons for still keeping them and not selling them in other videos uh but reality is that all of these are bought and paid for they are alternate assets in my portfolio right now i have not financed anything they are not giving me any financial duress but if you are financing something please don't don't find especially don't finance a guitar just my perspective last one getting back to this point on consumption this world all the people around you all the tiktok reels everything that you see around you it's all companies trying to drive you to consume they're giving you the urge to consume there's only one cure for this urge to consume it is the urge to create maybe it's not the only cure but at least for a musician for a creative kind of audience which i'm guessing a lot of folks here are that's the only cure i have kind of found it a little bit in my own experience so as some of you may know that i retired i put it in quotes because i could always go back but i retired from the corporate world about 7 8 months ago and you know when i was in the corporate world what i was doing is of course big check paychecks coming in every month um no time because too busy with work barely enough time to play guitar barely enough time to do the things i want so how do you make up for the lack of time you consume more maybe i want to get that next guitar etc etc look at the result behind me but the moment i stopped working something strange has happened and of course i've been doing this youtube channel plus i do a lot of other things and the urge i also found a guitar that i really like it is another video but more than anything else the urge to consume has gone away because i'm my mind is just so busy with thinking about all the creative stuff i need to do thinking about the idea for the next youtube video uh thinking about i also do a history thing on the side how do i think of that um i do real estate a little bit with my wife in singapore so helping people out so and that's something i'm doing for fun i'm not doing it as a job i'm just doing it because i love that that particular thing so because i'm and i'm thinking of creative strategies all the time to help people with their particular objectives so because i'm so busy not working but creating suddenly the urge to consume has gone down i have not bought any guitars for 4 or 5 months at this point in time um the i am not getting my satisfaction from buying the next thing or trying to get that happiness that i'm missing because i my work is taking so much out of me so look at your life only you can control it but there is no need to get that latest i know this is antithetical to the guitar industry or any industry or capital or rampant consumption based capitalism it's go i'm going against that grain but you might just be happier if you just replace that urge to buy something with the urge to create something i know that it has done me a lot of good all right so this was a very different kind of a video um but these were thoughts that i did want to get off my chest um do let me know your thoughts as well and i'll see you next time